We are beginning a series on basic clinical techniques. The first in our series will be the ophthalmoscope. As an optometrist, you should be able to examine the ocular health of your patient because through the patient's eyes, you can determine if the patient has other systemic diseases. So without much ado, let's dive right into it. Ophthalmoscopy is one of the key skills you should master as an optometrist. You should perform ophthalmoscopy on all your patients because there have been cases where patients didn't know they were diabetic or hypertensive or even had cancer. But because they visited the clinic, ophthalmoscopy was done and their lives were saved because the changes at the back of their eyes were seen and they were referred to the physician. So we'll be looking at the ophthalmoscope. This brand is the killer of thermoscope. We're going to be looking at the parts. Meanwhile, there are different brands out there, but this is what I have in my practice. This is the power knob. You can turn on and off from there. You can also increase or reduce the intensity of the lighting. That light that showed is where you shine into the patient's eye. This is the power diopter display. This is the power dial. You use it to select the lens to use. The red lenses are the minus lenses, while the black lenses are the plus lenses. This is the filter selector knob. You can use it to select the filter you want to use. The wide beam, the medium beam, the small beam, the grid, the grid, the slit. You use the wide beam to examine a dilated pupil and a small or medium beam to examine the constricted pupil. Let me give you the clinical guide when you want to perform ophthalmoscopy. If you wear spectacles like I do, you take it off. If your patient wears spectacles, of course you should take it off. But if you have high astigmatism, then you should be able to wear your glasses. But if you wear contact lenses, you're not expected to take off your contact lenses. The reason you're expected to take off your spectacles is to avoid any form of obstruction. You need to explain what you want to do to your patient. Remember that in ophthalmoscopy, you are very close to your patient. So explain what you want to do. Tell the patient what to expect, that you're going to be coming very close to him or her. All right. After you have explained the procedure to your patient, you ensure your patient is seated comfortably and upright, okay? After which you will turn off the illumination or you dim the illumination. For the purpose of this video, I'm not going to turn off the light in this room. Hold the ophthalmoscope in your right hand to examine your patient's right eye. So right eye to right hand to right eye. I have seen people who want to examine the patient's left eye. They are using their right eye with their right hand on the patient's left eye. That's not going to work. The next thing you need to ensure is that your ophthalmoscope is tilted like 20 degrees away from the patient. This is to avoid your nose bumping into your patient's nose. You won't want to do that to your patient, okay? Right, so that's that. And where is your target? Your patient is supposed to be looking at something at a distance, slightly up and like 15 degrees temporal. That is your patient's target. If your patient is looking right into your ophthalmoscope, you're not going to see the patient's optic disc. Another thing that you should bear in mind is that you need to hold the ophthalmoscope as close to your eye as possible. While performing ophthalmoscopy, you ensure your two eyes are open. This will help you to control accommodation, right? This will actually take practice. So if you are finding it difficult to keep your two eyes open initially, you can start learning with one eye open, but try to use the two eyes from time to time so you can learn it as soon as possible. Should you dilate to perform ophthalmoscopy or should you not dilate? I recommend that as a beginner, you should dilate the eyes of your subject, not the patient in the clinic. Like when I was in school, we used to pair up ourselves and perform ophthalmoscopy on each other's eyes. So we used to dilate ourselves. So you should try to dilate your friend's eyes so that it will help you to understand what the normal fungus looks like. It will make things easy for you. Just with a drop of tropical migrant percent, wait for 15 to 20 minutes and then you perform the ophthalmoscopy. Remember, you don't just dilate, 
there are some things you need to check before you dilate your patient okay so don't dilate your friend and assume that everything is fine you need to ensure that your friend's intraocular pressures are within normal limit you need to check that the angle of the anterior chamber of your subject's eyes are deep and not shallow these are the points to note when you're performing ophthalmoscopy on your patient first of all don't breathe on your patient remember you're in close proximity to this patient so you don't want to be breathing you don't want to be breathing into the patient's nose all right so try to hold your breath secondly yes while you're holding your breath you need to ensure that your breath smells fresh okay so that if there's a mistake your patient will smell something foul okay yeah so as professionals we need to pay attention to our hygiene we need to use our uh, roll-on, use our uh, deodorant, use a uh, light perfume. You wouldn't want to use something harsh. But you should try not to talk when you're very close to your patient. If you're performing ophthalmoscopy, you are too close, you want to talk, you just move back and then talk to your patient. For instance, your patient is not focusing where he or she should focus. You move back and then you redirect your patient. Also position yourself properly not only should your patient be positioned properly you should also position yourself properly try not to rest your hand on your patient's shoulders we're going to be looking at the examination of the anterior segment of the eye and for this part when we talk of anterior segment of the eye we're talking about the eyelids and the eyelashes the conjunctiva sclera cornea iris pupil and the lens while examining the eyelids and the eyelashes, you should set your ophthalmoscope at 10 diopters at 10 cm away. At this point, the magnification is 2.5x. You need to use the widest beam for this examination. What are you looking out for? You're looking out for abnormalities especially if there are discolorations like red or brown discolorations if there are lumps rough areas or serrations or any loss or irregularity of the eyelashes we're looking out for in turning of the eyelashes out turning of the eyelashes from there you're looking at the conjunctiva and when you're looking at the conjunctiva your patient should be looking at the nine cardinal directions of gaze i hope you still remember your nine cardinal directions of gaze all right so this is important so you can assess all the parts of the conjunctiva and while the patient is looking down you can lift the upper eyelid so that you can assess the conjunctiva properly what are you looking out for you're looking out for redness you're looking out for raised or rough areas you're also looking out for irregularity of the blood vessels from the conjunctiva we're moving on to the cornea the sclera the iris and the pupil when you're examining these areas your patient is not supposed to look at the nine cardinal points of gaze your patient should look straight ahead as the patient looks straight ahead while examining the cornea you are looking out for any loss of transparency any ulceration or presence of blood vessels Remember that the cornea is meant to be a vascular. So when you see any neovascularization, that is a cause for concern. From there, yeah, you observe the iris. Look out for any abnormalities in color, in texture, if there are blood vessels, if there are any raised or absent areas of the iris. From there, you examine the pupil, observe the size, the shape, Make sure the sizes and the shapes on both eyes are the same. Observe the reflexes, look at the margins, and just be sure that everything is in order. If you're observing the lens with the ophthalmoscope, it's just for you to just look straight. In fact, if you're looking at the pupil, you're already looking at the lens because the lens is behind the iris. Look out for cloudy areas of the lens. If there are cataracts, it will show as cloudy areas just look directly and you're going to see the lens of your patient after examining all these areas you need to record your findings there is nothing like nad in optometry practice 
professionally there's nothing like that because it could mean not actually done so when you observe you record properly how do you record properly be descriptive draw when you should draw if you notice any abnormality you draw it there are limitations when you're using the direct ophthalmoscope to examine your patient's anterior segment the instrument of choice is the slit lamp because it gives you bigger magnification the direct ophthalmoscope gives you limited magnification or low magnification and there's no stereopsis with the direct ophthalmoscope when you're examining the anterior segment of the patient's eyes and then the there is minimal lighting variability unlike you have in the slit lamp let's move on to the examination of the posterior segment talking about the posterior segment we are looking at the vitreous we are looking at the fundus if you're looking at the fundus you are observing the retina the optic disc the vessels and the macula what are you looking out for you need to follow your routine when you shine the ophthalmoscope into your patient's eye you need to first of all observe the red reflex when there's an absence of the red reflex that means there's something that is going on such as corneal scars cataracts vitreous hemorrhage or asteroid hyalysis when you see the red reflex you just observe the anterior segment so this is just like a routine when you're performing ophthalmoscopy right i think i forgot to mention this earlier the red reflex is very important before you examine the anterior segment then the posterior segment where you look at the disc the blood vessels and lastly the macula when you're observing the optic disc what should you be looking out for when you're observing the optic disc first of all you look at the size the size is very important you look at the color is there any congestion is there any pallor then what is the type of the optic disc is it type 1 or type 2 type 3 as the case may be you look at the cup to disc ratio determine what the cup to disc ratio is what is the depth of the cup what is the clarity of the margin of the optic disc are there hemorrhages what is the shape are there new vessels or collaterals? Is there any new vessels on the disc? Is there any venous pulsation? Are there copying of the disc? Just as you have in glaucoma. Is there any optic atrophy? Just look out for pathologies in general. So that's the end of our video today. I hope I didn't forget to mention anything. If I forgot to mention something and I need to talk about it, I'll make another video on that. So keep practicing. And yes, if you haven't subscribed, do well to subscribe, share this video. Let's reach as many optometrists as we can.